Welcome back and thanks for clicking on this video. Today we have a hot topic to talk about, hopefully not literally hot. In fact, I will be overclocking the RTX 2080 Ti, not the Founders Edition graphics card, but this really beefy gaming OC model by Gigabyte. I know the whole 2080 Ti situation right now, well, let's say it's a little delicate. Apparently the failure rate of those cards is above average. Well, how serious the situation is, I don't know of course. Mainly the Founders Edition cards directly from Nvidia seem to be affected, but apparently there also are known issues in cases with AIB board partner models, albeit not quite as frequent. I'll make an exception and we'll talk about this topic a little more in this video, even though it's not really what I initially planned on doing. What I can however tell you guys right away is that I currently do not face any issues with my 2080 Ti, at least not yet. Should I encounter issues, I'll probably let you guys know about it in a separate video, provided I have enough time at hand. Alright, but let's get back to the main topic now. Previously, I've showed you guys my overclock on the RTX 2080. The way of doing it is virtually identical. The only thing that's different are the actual clock speeds. The whole approach remains the same. The majority of you would use tools such as MSI Afterburner or EVGA's Precision X1. I would in fact recommend using one of those. But I have already installed Gigabyte's Aorus engine along with the RGB Fusion software for lighting control. Essentially, the same functionality is offered, only with an uglier and worse user interface. Therefore, I wouldn't really count myself as a fan of that piece of software, however, it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. So for now I'll stick with the hours engine. A routine for me would be checking and monitoring the clock speeds at stock, default settings, to basically see how far Nvidia's own GPU boost already takes us in terms of clock speed. I would advise you to do this while gaming or if you prefer it a little more extreme, you could for instance use the Fermark stress testing tool. Although you will probably see slightly lower clocks with this running as opposed to games. But it's just for reference. On average, my card clocks at 1470MHz, the memory remains at a constant 1750MHz. So far so good. First, as always, we increase the PAR target, might as well just link it with the temp target and set both to their max. Depending on the card, the max value of the PAR target or limit can differ. In my case, with this Gigabyte Gaming OC, it's 111%. In simple words, meaning the card in total is allowed to draw 11% more power as opposed to what the manufacturer has intended. That in turn means we get more reserves, thus higher stable clock speeds could be achieved. Unfortunately, we can't alter the GPU voltage and video lock that slider down. Who knows, with the recent incidents, that might be a good choice for once. Anyway, I have increased the GPU core clock by 160 MHz, the memory by 500 MHz. It's advisable to customize the fan curve a little. At 55 degrees Celsius, I'll let my fan spin at roughly 60-65%, so I don't actually run into the temperature limit. But considering I'm working with this beefy cooler on this gaming OC version, there should be no point for concern. Obviously, one could optimize the fan curve, but I was lazy. I would also like to mention it's important finding the right balance between the GPU core and memory clock. For instance, an extremely high GPU clock but low memory over clock wouldn't really take you anywhere in many cases. One could get much more out of one's graphics card by actually settling for something a bit more reasonable in terms of GPU clock and additionally increasing the clock on the memory. Obviously it's the same thing the other way around. Don't overclock the memory like crazy and leave the GPU clock alone. In my case I had to distribute the 11% more power the card is allowed to draw wisely. But please do not assume each card clocks equal equally as high. The results I achieved here should only be taken as a reference point, not more. So when taking a look at the clock speeds before and after, there for sure is an improvement visible. But how much does overclocking a beast like this actually affect gaming performance? Take a look I guess.
So, as you've seen, depending on the game title, there often is additional performance to be unlocked on the 2080 Ti. In my opinion, overclocking is very much worth it here. At a resolution of 1440p, the differences aren't as visible anymore though, especially since we've already had pretty damn high frame rates before even touching any dials. But here and there we see some nice improvements. The eye should however be all on the 4K or rather 2160p results, in my opinion. Sure, there are no earth-shattering performance boosts to be seen, nonetheless, in pretty much all games tested, there were small but noticeable FPS gains. Completely free of charge, that is. Well, we do have to pay some attention to the power consumption too, and admittedly, it has gone up slightly, but roughly 30 watts more or less should be of no concern in this performance class. Definitely not the end of the world. The temperature didn't cause any issues in my case. In fact, I can report to degrees less than at stock default settings, although that's only because I've increased the fan speed. Thus the card was a little louder of course, so for those that like it quieter as long as the temperature's okay, there's no reason why you shouldn't be allowed to reduce the fan speed a little. Alright, it's all good and well with overclocking, but honestly I'm not too sure if it's wise to overclock one's 2080 Ti right now. At the time of writing the script, the causes for the apparent higher failure rate are still unknown. According to some sources, overheating GDDR6 memory could have something to do with it. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. What I can tell you right now is that I don't have any issues with my 2080 Ti. So while the free performance boost certainly is very very tempting, I don't have the best feeling increasing clock speeds due to the higher number of dying 2080 Ti's. Call me paranoid, but I don't have that strong of a desire to overclock this GPU right now, especially the video memory. If there's any truth to what we've heard, this would only further tax the memory. What are your thoughts on all this? And as always, thanks so much for watching.